One night, as this creature lay in bed with her husband, she heard a melodious sound, so sweet and delectable, surpassing all the melody that might be heard in the world. And after this time, she never had any desire to have fleshly communion with her husband. For paying the debt of matrimony was so abominable to her that she would rather have eaten and drunk the ooze and muck of the gutter. just for Christmas, but a hymn of the common people, translating the liturgical Latin dove into Lollard Robin English, seeing through the sacraments she adored, the altars she married, the stained glass she read, the holy writ she couldn't, to the face of God. I drag her from her saints and bones, Back here to old man flesh From deathless soul to perished clay And bonds she would forget My vision splinter like my head In five parts from my fall her vision capped by laboring love for wifedom like a pole. The grass is always greener on the other side, I say. She says in heaven it really is this green hill far away. This green hill far away. Yet wife, nurse, 
nursing my fetid flesh, so tenderly she seems. More like an angel or a saint than all her church by dreams. Unmarried priests can only watch in all her tendering love. Is this the end of me? I cry, no, John, you're here above. The grass is always greener on the other side, I say. She says in heaven it really is this green. At last, the Archbishop of York came into the chapel with his clerics, and he said to her abruptly, Why do you go about in white clothes? Are you a virgin? She, kneeling before him, said, No, sir, I am no virgin. I've had fourteen children. I am a married woman. He ordered his household to fetch a pair of fetters, and said she would be fettered, for she was a false heretic. And then she said, I am no heretic, nor shall you prove me one. The archbishop went away and left her standing a long time, trembling and alone. Then for a long while she said her prayers to our Lord God Almighty to help her and succour her against all her enemies, both spiritual and bodily, and her flesh trembled and quaked amazingly, trembling, so that she was glad to put her hands under her clothes, so that it should not be noticed. One day, while this creature was bearing children, and was newly delivered of a child, our Lord Jesus Christ said to her that she should bear no more children, and therefore he commanded her to go to Norwich. And she said, Ah, oh, my dear Lord, how shall I go? I am feeling faint and weak. Don't be afraid. I shall make you strong enough. I bid you go to the vicar of St. Stephen's and say that I greet him warmly and that he is a high chosen soul of mine and tell him he greatly pleases me with his preaching and tell him the secrets of your soul and my counsels that I reveal to you. Then she made her way to Norwich. And then she was commanded by our Lord to go to an anchoress in the same city called Julian, and so she did, and told her about the grace that God had put into her soul of compunction, contrition, sweetness, devotion, compassion with holy meditation and high contemplation, and very many holy speeches and converse that our Lord spoke to her soul and also many wonderful revelations which she described to the anchoress to find out if there were any deception in them, for the anchoress was expert in such things and could give good advice. The anchoress, hearing the marvellous goodness of our Lord, highly thanked God with all her heart for his visitation, advising this creature to be obedient to the will of our Lord and fulfil with all her might whatever he put into her soul, if it were not against the worship of God and the profit of her fellow Christians. For if it were, then it were not the influence of a good spirit, but an evil spirit. The Holy Ghost never urges a thing against charity, and if he did, he would be contrary to his own self, for he is all charity. Also, he moves the soul to all chasteness, for chaste livers are called the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost makes the soul stable and steadfast in the right faith and the right belief. And a double man in soul is always unstable and unsteadfast. 
he that is forever doubting like the wave of the sea, which is moved and borne about with the wind. <laughs>